Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Zorin OS 16. So this has been touted for a long time as one of the best operating systems if you're coming from Windows, if you can't tolerate it. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a tour. Let's click on start tour. So one of the first things that you're going to notice is you have a panel and on the left hand side you have a tiny Z button. If you click it, you're going to get a very Windows like but also very beautiful start menu. We're going to go into the start menu later, but now we're just going to proceed with our tour. And now we can change our desktop look with Zorin appearance. Let's go ahead and check it out. So right off the bat, this is the Zorin core version. There is also a Zorin pro version. And with that, you get way more desktop layouts. As you can see, you can upgrade to Zorin OS pro. If you have money, I'm broke. So I'm gonna go with core. All right. So first up, is your standard default Zorin OS with start menu and a panel, you have desktop icons, very Windows 10 like appearance. Number two, we have this. So if you are someone who dates back to the XP days or Windows 95, 98 days, you will remember that there were titles on the, or beside the icon of the application that you had open. So this is a shout out back to those days. And if you're someone who is a huge fan of this, you can absolutely go ahead and enjoy your Zorin experience like this. Thirdly, we have a hybrid approach. So your icons are going to be centered, which personally I'm a big fan of, and your menus are going to be here. So this is kind of like a tablet friendly appearance and you have your wallpaper darkened and all your applications over here. Now this is running in a virtual machine so you're not going to see any of the animations. I am sorry but this is very close to the native experience that you're gonna get as far as this tour is considered. So let's get out of it. And now let's look at the fourth and final appearance that we have over here. This is more akin to the vanilla GNOME experience. So if we click on this button, you can see we have our dock, we have our applications that are open. And if we hover over this, you can see we can change our workspaces. Basically, you can have one workspace for work. So all your applications for work are open here. And if you have a huge amount of RAM, you could switch workspaces and you could open multiple applications here too. So everything is neatly organized. Also, these are dynamic. So anytime you fill up the last workspace with an application, another workspace will automatically be created for you. All right. So let's close that. Let's go to our default workspace and let's continue with our tour. Speed may be limited in a virtual machine. Obviously, we're going to move ahead. Connect your online accounts. You could easily do that. You could connect your Google, Nextcloud, email, even your Microsoft accounts. You could access your OneDrive from your file manager, which is which is very good. Link your phone and computer with Zorin Connect. So this is kind of like KDE Connect. This is probably a similar implementation of KDE Connect like GNOME Connect. So basically you can have your phone and computer synced. You can share your files. You can share your clipboard and it's very useful. I use it every day with Windows and with Pop! OS. So this is something that saves me a hassle of copying something over or maybe if I have some text that I want to copy from my computer over to my phone. It's very handy. You get the idea. Okay, so now we can have software to find and install our app. So we're going to go ahead and launch software. Let's see what happens. And there you go. So as you can see, we have our editor's picks, we have our recent releases, recommended audio and video applications, recommended games, and if we scroll all the way down, we have categories, so audio and video, communication and news, productivity. So if you wanted to download something like Caden Live, you could go into audio and video and you could choose to download Caden Live, which is a beautiful free and open source video editor. I recommend you use it. We also have other tabs indicating installed applications and updates that we're going to have. It's updated at the moment, but if you have any updates, those are going to show in here. All right, let's get out of it and continue on with our tour. 
click on next and this is important now if you're someone who is jumping from windows to linux and if you how and if you are heavily involved with microsoft office ecosystem you are probably better off with installing only office because it natively works with docx xlsx and pptx file formats and even though libreoffice has come miles and hundreds of miles with compatibility for Microsoft Office documents. If you are someone who heavily collaborates with other people who are in the ecosystem, things can break. So you can pick your poison in this page and LibreOffice is already installed by the way. You can just go ahead and install only Office. And if you like it, you can go with it. Or maybe you can ask your colleagues to collab with you using Google Docs. That's, a, that's another very viable option. So that's it. We hope that you enjoyed the Zorin OS. To get more advice and tips, see the help. We're not going to go to help. We're going to close it. And before we continue with the tour, we're going to change Zorin appearance to the default. And we're going to check the other parts of Zorin OS that I skipped last time. So we have themes. So from here, you can change your accent color. Let's say I want to go with red. So we can go with red. And as you can see, these have changed to red it's beautiful you can also change the background theme from light mode to dark mode or even you could schedule it on the basis that you would want it to so so now everything looks dark it's very pretty uh maybe the red is a little too much we're gonna go back to blue and as you can see it's not only black it has a very blue hue to it so that looks cool if you pick the right color for you let's open files and we can see how things look so yeah it's very pretty man on the left hand side you have your standard bar the icons look very pretty even the minimize maximize and cross buttons are very windows like and way more stylistic than windows i dare say that was beautiful so moving on we have the interface so we can have the title buttons to the left or to the right if you're a mac person or if you're a windows person you already know what your poison is we can enable jelly mode which is a fun mode to drag your applications around and see how it behaves but since we are in a virtual machine, I'm going to turn it off. You could totally do it if you like it. And left super key opens up the activities overview. We can also set it to open the Zorin menu. So when you hit the start button or the super key, you can open your accessories. I mean, your start menu. All right. So moving on, we have our taskbar settings. If we click the gear icon, you can change your panel size. Your You can make your panel intelligently hide. So there, your panel will be revealed if you don't have any applications over it and if you put any application over it it's going to hide it also changes the appearance of the panel a little bit i actually kind of like this it, it floats and it's pretty but we're going to keep it at the default setting we can change the panel background opacity so we can make it more transparent or we can make it less transparent I think we're going to keep it off for now and we're going to move on. You can change the position. So you have, so you can basically change the position of your pinned apps, of your Zorin menu button, of your time and date, of your other buttons that do other things. And also for your drives that are in the, that are connected there, that are currently hooked up to your system. You can also go to behavior and you have a whole bunch of options that you could discover for yourself. We also have actions. So, click action behavior when clicking on the icon of a running application you could toggle through all of these instances that you have i like to keep it at cycle windows plus minimize it works for me it works perfectly fine so i'm happy with that all right so now that we're done with the appearance of zorin os which is one of the selling factors of zorin os we're going to continue on with our tour we're going to check out the date and time panel so this is basically the gnome notification center along with your calendar which it has just been pushed to the right so that it blends in more with what a windows user would be familiar with and there is really nothing more to see it's very clean it's very handy to use now we're going to go ahead into the terminal and check some things out. So first order of business is we're going to type uname hyphen A to check the kernel out. So this is using the 5.11 kernel. So if you're somebody who is on, let's say Intel iGPU or AMD GPUs, the open source drivers that are in this kernel will be newer than if this had 
had the older 5.4 kernel. Because remember, this is based on Ubuntu 20.4 LTS, and that has 5.4 kernel. So you are getting a better deal if you download Zorin OS. I mean, if you're an advanced user, you could also change your kernel within any Linux distro, but that's not really the point. So now that we're in HTOP, we can see the RAM consumption is 1.14 gigahertz or gigabytes. And this is not the least in the world, but it also would have been lower if this was a fresh boot. But as you can see, after a bit of tinkering around in the OS and the settings, it's stable at 1.14 gigabits, so gigabytes. So you know that if you have a computer with four gigs of RAM or eight gigs of RAM or maybe 16, 32, you're going to be absolutely fine using Zorin OS. It doesn't take up a ton of your RAM and it performs beautifully, no stutters. We are also going to see if we have NeoFetch installed as is custom. And yes, it is. So the beautiful Z logo. We are running Zorin OS 16, 5.11 kernel. We have 12 flat packs out of the box by default. And the bash version is 5.0.17. So now that we're done with all of that, one of the last things that remain on this tour is to check out the start menu, which probably should have done earlier but well this is a good time as any so let's go through it so on your left you have beautiful categories into divided into accessories games graphics internet office sound and video system tools and utilities and on your right as like windows 7 you have home desktop documents and a whole lot of important folders that you might need to access. You also have your software, your settings, and most importantly, Zorin appearance. You also have your logout, lock, your restart, and your power off buttons. So once in accessories, we have clocks, we have files, maps, text editor, to do, weather. Now, one of the things I love about Zorin OS and also about Linux Lite is that they try to make these names as much as, as much generic as possible. So Without having names like Gwen View or Ocular, you have Document Viewer, Photo Viewer, which is far better in my opinion for someone who is very new to Linux. You also have some games. These are the games that come by default. You can easily go, go and download Steam if you want to. But for someone who's just looking to play old games, this is absolutely fine. For internet, we have Firefox web browser. As usual, we also have Remina. Under Office, we have the LibreOffice Suite. This is Linux. I love using Linux. So dictionary support isn't enabled out of the box, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and close it. And another thing that I like about LibreOffice Writer in Zorin OS is that it's set to a tabbed appearance. Now, personally, I use LibreOffice Writer in the old style, but if this is your jam, this looks very beautiful on this type of theming inside Zorin OS. Let's close that. Yeah, we're now going to save it. Let's continue on with the tour. So under sound and video, we have Bracero for burning CDs. We have Cheese for taking photos and pictures. We have Pitivi for editing movies, although I would lean towards Kaden Live. Rhythmbox is your way favorite music player you have sound recorder videos which is probably using mpv very standard very much needed applications are here under system tools you will find very handy little tools for you can install additional drivers from here you can check your disk spaces you can manage your disks you also have htop we can have the main menu. We can add or remove applications from the main menu as the name suggests. We also have a ton of other things to go through, including software updater, settings and software and Zorin Connect. So let's go back and click on utilities before wrapping up this video quickly. We have archive manager, backups, calculators, characters, and a whole lot of things that we could want to use. We also have our favorite terminal at the bottom and our screenshot utility. Now, one of the things that I did not talk about in this video is the wallpaper. The wallpaper is a dynamic wallpaper. It is currently 428 p.m. And as you can see, the wallpaper has started to go from a morning to noon style to a very evening style. As you can see, the orange from the sunset is beaming up from behind the mountains. And I think this is a little thing, but an absolutely fantastic thing. And so with that note, 
we would like to end this video right here and thank you for your time if you stuck around till the end i don't know what to say man congratulations i feel like i know you personally and well there you go have a good day and i'll see you tomorrow peace